Almost everyone has taken a tumble at one time or another, but few people take falls seriously. Nearly 7,000 people die each year as a result of falls at home. And each year, another 4,600 die as a result of falls on the job or in public places. In the mining industry, slips, trips, and falls account for a large number of injuries every year, particularly in our surface mines, where it's especially important for you to protect yourself from slips, trips, and falls. Basically, there are two kinds of falls, slips and trips on the same level and falls to a different level. Usually, people don't fall very far because they avoid extreme heights or use extra caution when working in high places. Still, during a recent three-year period, slips and falls from machinery accounted for over 1,200 accidents in surface mines. Half of these accidents occurred while mounting and dismounting, the most common type of slips and falls. Even when safe access onto and off of the machine is provided, a person may be tempted to take a shortcut and jump from a height that could cause an injury. In this instance, the miner had second thoughts and dismounted the safe way. Surface mining often involves large machinery located in very rough terrain. There are more tripping hazards here than most people would suspect. Areas around drag lines sometimes have very deep potholes high banks of dirt, and muddy, slippery walking surfaces that should be avoided whenever possible. Whenever you're in pits and dragline areas, it's extremely important to keep alert to these hazardous conditions. Ground conditions in mill or plant areas are also places where workers should use more attention and caution. These areas have algae growths or are slippery with mud, oil, grease, or other chemical leakage. Clay in a mining operation is slick and slippery. Additional precautions should always be taken when handling or working around mining clays. Whether it's earth, concrete, or metal, care must be taken when working or walking on all surfaces where mud and product materials may collect. You should continually check your boots for any material that could cause a slip or fall. Miners who are injured or killed in slips, trips, and falls never plan to get hurt. The people at this operation have a very proactive safety program, so workers can plan how not to get hurt. Slips and falls can be serious, and safety training is the best way to prevent them. Mounting and dismounting machinery is where the majority of slips, trips, and falls in the mining industry occur. Always follow the basic safety procedures to avoid injury getting on and off your machine. First, use the handholds provided and make sure you have a firm, secure grip and don't get into a hurry. Good ladder ways are usually provided on front end loaders, but they must be used correctly for your safety. You may not see the grease, mud or early morning dew that can cause a slip on a ladder step. To prevent a slip, never jump down. Face the handrails and remember the three points contact rule. Keep two hands and one foot or one hand and both feet in contact with a ladder at all times. When ladders must be used to reach high places, carefully check the stability of the ladder and make sure it's positioned properly on a firm and level surface. You need both hands for climbing. Use a tool pouch secured to your belt or strapped over your shoulder. On some jobs, you may have to hoist tools and other equipment with a rope or chain hoist. While on foot, observe the ground for hazards such as spilled loose material grease, oil, water, and algae on concrete or steel walkways. Good housekeeping plays a major role in eliminating slip, trip, and fall hazards. When you see a hazard, take care of the problem yourself if possible, or tell your supervisor. Don't just step over or ignore the hazard. Be alert for openings in walkways. Make sure before you step that you have something to step on. Report any hazards you see to your supervisor to prevent what could be a dangerous accident. Dredges, work boats, and boats used to transport workers to the dredge are also potential sites for slips and falls. Dredges can have slippery surfaces. Diesel dredges may have oil and fuel spilled on the deck. When mixed with water, this can be disastrous to workers who must walk over such hazardous surfaces. 
Electrically powered dredges have areas where winches or other moving parts need to be lubricated. These areas must be kept clean of spilled materials. Tools, cables, spare parts and other objects left lying about on the deck can become dangerous. Housekeeping, putting things in place and general safety precautions are needed when walking around on the dredge. Any tripping or slipping hazards found on the dredge should be removed or corrected immediately. There's no time like the present, like now, to follow good housekeeping practices. A dropped tool can cause injuries as well as falls from high places. Wipe grease from tools frequently. Use tool belts or pouches, buckets or some other means to prevent dropping them. Mining areas and processing plants are generally considered highly hazardous areas. But offices and other inside working places have a potential for slips, trips and falls. Wipe your shoes clean when entering offices and control rooms from the outside. Mud, clay, grease and oil brought inside could be dangerous. That first cup of coffee in the morning could become a slip hazard. You can prevent an accident by wiping up spills as soon as they happen. Open desk and file drawers, extension cords, open boxes or cartons, loose carpeting, or something as small as a pencil or pen on the floor could cause a serious fall. Such potential hazards must be corrected or eliminated for your own safety and the safety of co-workers. A blind or unmarked corner could also result in an injury. This can often be corrected by simply posting caution signs or markings. Storerooms also have a potential for slips, trips, and falls. So you need to think safety and perform your work in a safe manner. Most slips, trips, and falls can be foreseen and prevented by following safe working procedures, observing hazardous walking conditions, and exercising good housekeeping practices. So take the extra time to walk and climb safely. Don't take shortcuts. The real key to safety is thinking, whether you're on the job or not. Think before you reach, before you climb, before you lift, and before you take that first step. Remember, thinking safety-conscious employees work more efficiently and make smarter decisions. And they live longer. Thank you.